Nearly 19 years ago, America embarked on a noble mission to mightily pursue the terrorist perpetrators of September 11th attacks and their evil supporters, and to prevent such a heinous attack from ever happening again. We've achieved great things. We've ensured Afghanistan isn't a haven for terrorists who can attack us, and we have bettered the lives of Afghan people, for which we are very proud. Today, political debate in Afghanistan is free and vigorous. Today, more than 9 million students are enrolled in school. 39% of them are girls. Today, more than 57% of Afghans have access to basic health care, compared to just 9% in 2002. And Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda today is a shadow of its former self. We have decimated its leadership and now have the Taliban agreeing that al-Qaeda must never again find safe haven in Afghanistan. But just as Afghanistan today isn't the Afghanistan of 2001, the world of 2020 isn't the world of 2001 either. Today, the United States faces national security challenges that weren't even imagined a few years ago, from Iran, from China, from Russia, and elsewhere. President Trump has recognized this new reality, he also saw that our sacrifices and gains in Afghanistan and realized the hard truth that a comprehensive, inclusive, durable peace could only be secured by the Afghan people themselves. Today, we're realistic. We are seizing the best opportunity for peace in a generation, built on the hard work of our soldiers, diplomats, businessmen, aid workers, friends, and the Afghans themselves. Today, we're restrained. We recognize America shouldn't fight in perpetuity in the graveyard of empires if we can help Afghans forge peace. And we have respect. We believe that the Afghan people are ready to chart their own course forward. Today, following the first ever week-long break in fighting in nearly 19 years, I'm proud to announce that the United States has secured separate commitments from the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Taliban to hold negotiations for peace. Very importantly, the U.S. Taliban agreement entails a promise from the Taliban that terrorists can never again operate from Afghan soil. We make no mistake, the chapter of American history on the Taliban is written in blood. They've killed many Americans, NATO allies, coalition partners, and many Afghans. I'm just as angry over 9-11 as I was the day I watched Al-Qaeda knock down the Twin Towers on TV. Our valiant service members, intelligence warriors, and world-class diplomats who have served in Kandahar and in Helmand and all over Afghanistan know firsthand what I mean. They know what I mean exactly. And we know exactly who we're dealing with. If the Taliban do not uphold their commitments, President Trump and his team will not hesitate to do what we must do to protect American lives. If, on the other hand, the Taliban abide by their promises, the United States will undertake a responsible, conditions-based troop withdrawal. That withdrawal, that withdrawal means that our men and women in uniform will incur fewer risks, our financial burden will be eased, and our brave troops will return home. This is a hopeful moment, but it's only the beginning. There's a great deal of hard work ahead on the diplomatic front. Finally, let me speak directly to those invested in Afghanistan. First, to America's military and intelligence warriors. I know that some of you may be on your fifth or sixth tours of duty, maybe even more far from the comforts of home. As the CIA director, it was my honor to join you in dealing blow after blow to this vicious enemy. Many of you wear black and silver bracelets in tribute to your brothers and sisters who died so that your countrymen might live in peace and security. We will not squander what they and you have won through blood, sweat, and tears. You've kept America safe alongside our allies and Afghan partners. You've helped give the people of Afghanistan this opportunity for a brighter future. 
Second, to our NATO allies and other coalition partners who have sacrificed right alongside of us, we will continue to look to you and to all countries which support these agreements to help maintain this nascent peace. Whether it's Norway or Australia or Japan or any of our other valued friends and partners, we know you share our cautious hope. To Afghanistan's neighbors, including Pakistan, we thank you for your efforts in helping reach these historic agreements and make clear our expectation that you will continue to do your part to promote a peaceful and prosperous Afghanistan so that the country and region can reap the benefits of lasting peace. And to the Afghan people, this is your moment. Wars have tortured your country since 1979. No more violence. No more chaos. Listen. Listen to the voices of all, young and old, men and women, from every region, from every tribe, from every ethnicity, and from every religion. Factions will undoubtedly emerge that want to spoil our good work. We must call them out and reject their schemes for discord. I'll close by urging all parties to heed the wisdom of the pursuit of peace that's found in Scripture. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Today we've sought peace. We will continue to pursue it. Thank you, and I'm happy to take a few questions.